Hello and welcome back to the Euro Roundup, guys. This week I am joined by Football Daily's very own Ginger Maestro. It is Joseph Tomlinson. Bonjour. Pato is away reciting Latin somewhere, Joe. Boring fuck. <laughs> anyway, first game of the weekend, our first winners even, goes to Liverpool, who beat Mickey Phelan's 10 man hole 5 1. What did you think of the game, Joseph? Absolute murder, and I think you've got to take mm. your hats off to Liverpool. This is a whole team who have actually started the season surprisingly well. Every fort they get battered, but United struggled to break them down. They got a few mm. early wins, but Liverpool made it look easy. 5-1 is a massive scoreline. Liverpool are now at a 120-year high of goals after eight games. They just can't stop scoring, can they? And they didn't look particularly troubled at the back either. Carrius, despite shipping a goal, didn't have to make a single save in this game. Hull's keeper had to make six. So the score, theoretically, could have been 11-1. Deary me, murders. Jurgen Klopp must be a happy man. That front three, or maybe even a front four, looks so exciting. They just can't stop scoring goals, can they, Christoph? Yes, Joseph. And your energy levels are very high for the morning. If I was going to pick one of those guys, I'd go for Roberto Firmino. He was class yesterday. He made two tackles and three interceptions, Joe. And when your point man is working that hard, you are going to be a very, very difficult team to beat. Jimmy Milner as well, the unsung hero. First time he has scored twice in a Premiership game when you consider the longevity of his career. That is pretty, pretty scary. And he's now contributed 20 goals. Jesus. Since the start of the 2015-16 season, that's more than any other person at the club. Coutinho is also very, very influential, getting another goal, an absolute banger, may I add, and an assist. Stop. And you look at his counterpart, Robert Snodgrass, on the same wing, he only had 32 touches in comparison to Coutinho's century. But that shows you how far Hull were pinned back up the pitch, Joseph. It really does. Coutinho, though, I'm still not convinced he shoots from everyone. One goes in, the eight others miss. Still, when it does, bangs. What about Lalana's finish? Oh, what so an absolute Keown world! Keown said he hit it clean. I don't know what game you're watching, yeah. Martin. He's clearly scuffed it into the corner. Clearly. Nevertheless, Lalana has started the season well, as have Liverpool. But how high can they expect to finish this season? Let us know what you think in the comments. Our first losers come from the San Siro, and it's Inter Milan who drew one all against Bologna. Bologna, of all people. Yes, they were our winners last week, but the Boers men are firmly in our losers category this week before they'd won three consecutive games on the bounce after uh, the Boer reverted to that 4 2 3 1 formation into looking hugely promising. Joe, before this game, Mario Cardi, statistically the most dangerous striker in Europe at the minute with six goals and one assist. Now, this game didn't go according to plan, and the Boer levelled it firmly at one man. That is Kondogbia who we called a camel, Joseph. It would yeah. seem he has the hump with the midfielder. Fantastic. Yeah, Nailed he it. absolutely destroyed Kondogbia, who consistently gave the ball away. It was, of course, at fault for the Bologna goal. He even hooked him after about 60 minutes, pulled him straight off the pitch. The Inter fans were booing him. Of course, this isn't the first time that he's isolated a player. Brozovic, who came off uh, a few weeks ago, hasn't been in a playing squad <laughs> since. That's how militant De Boer can be. However, I think that's endearing him to Inter mm. Milan fans. Inter Milan fans on Twitter especially are really starting to enjoy De Boer's system because if a player fucks up, he punishes them properly. There's no messing about. We've also got uh, our first sight of Gabriel Barbosa at the weekend. Came on, didn't have Certainly as did. much of an influence as as he perhaps would have hoped. However, De Boer again spoke about his need to bed him in slowly. I think that's probably true coming from the Brazilian league. However, this was not a great result. After beating Juventus a couple of weeks ago, they're expected to beat Bologna at home. Yes, De Boer is certainly raising the bar. And what I was most impressed with, Joseph, he's not afraid to drop household names for academy graduates. Look at last night. Mianga, the left back, four interceptions and seven tackles. That is outrageous behaviour from him. And with young players like that, it can only bode well for the future. But Inter fans, can they still challenge with this stuttering form? We're not sure. Let us know in the comments below. Our next winners are Dortmund Joseph, who beat Freiburg 3-1 at the weekend. That makes it 20 goals in four games. It's pure, unadulterated filth. Thomas Tuchel is still yet to lose at home in the league as a Dortmund manager. And this equals their best run of 24 games at home unbeaten, Joseph. Oh, they are dirty at the moment, Borussia Absolute Dortmund. Shot. That third goal against Freiburg, if you haven't already, I suggest you go and check it out now. Rafa Guerrero, oh my goodness gracious me. It's like watching Barcelona 2009 all over again. 
What a finish. And talking of Guerrero, the lad looks special. Of course, they mm. brought him in in the summer. He had a fantastic Euros with Portugal. And he has now kind of moved from left back into a more defensive midfield role. So, so in good. that role, he's contributed six goals in the last four games. Three goals and three assists. Amazing stuff from him. They also used Emre Moore to oh, great effect on the that weekend. That flick from Emre Moore. Dirty boy. That young, the young Turk, of course, who's playing out on the left under, Tom, under Thomas Tuchel. He looks exciting, combining really nicely with Usman Dembele. And overall, this Dortmund squad looks fantastic. Mm. There were question marks asked over whether or not the big names leaving might hinder them in, in the immediate times. Smart, that's it. But it hasn't. It hasn't. Now they play Real Madrid on Tuesday. Big game. What a game that is going to be. But have they got the strength and depth to challenge someone like Bayern? Let us know in the comments below. Our next losers come from France and it has to be the steaming pile of sh that are Leon. They lost 1 0 to Lorient. <laughs> Bruno Genesio's side set up with a 3 5 1 1. Trying to be a bit clever. Created 18 chances, but at the back, they were stinking. Crystal. That is one way of putting it, Joseph. Yang and Biwa in particular was very suspect in that back three, being dispossessed no less than twice in very, very suspect positions. As you alluded to, not a bad day going forward. Now, Bill Fekir was pretty productive. He carved out four opportunities for himself completed five dribbles, but was dispossessed four times as well, so pretty inconsistent. But the Lorient keeper, Lecomte, he had some day in goal making, eight saves, he was like a wall, say magnifique, but Leon do struggle without Lacazette. Joseph, here's a stat for you in well, Pat's absence. Since 2013-14, in the 14 games that Lacazette's missed, They've only won three. Oh, that is Pathetic. disgraceful. I and did... now, where are they in the league, mate? Yeah, they're seven points behind Nice is where they are. Mario Balotelli, of course, oh. scoring more goals. He just won't Go stop. Come on, Super Mario. Come on, Nice. We want you to win the league. <laughs> PSG, you're struggling. Come on, Nice. Come on. Do you agree with Joe? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs> Hashtag anybody at PSG. Yeah, why not? Our next winners are Peter Bosch's Ajax, who beat Pexwell. 5-1, which makes it five wins on the bounce, Josephine. And they needed it, didn't they, mate? Feyenoord have won seven on the bounce. They're the informed team. The chase continues. The chase does continue there on Feyenoord's tails like a rat up a drain pipe. Nevertheless, some of those youngsters that Peter Bosch has at his disposal look really, oh. really exciting. Oh. Bertrand Traore, 21, I believe. They've got Sanchez, 20. Dolberg, 18. These players look very, very good. Hakim Ziyech, of course. Hakim Ziyech as well. Dolberg, though, has now got four goals in his last three oh. games. One of the ones on the weekend was an absolute belter. I suggest you go and check that out if you haven't already. Mm. Hakim Ziyech, you mentioned then, brought in in the summer. He looks an unbelievable quality, prospect. Quality we mentioned him in the top 10 players your club mm. should be signing a while ago. He has now got six assists and one goal in five games. Very, very impressive stuff. Him combining with Bertrand Traore, who was of course managed by Peter Bosch when he was at Vitesse Arnhem, look like they could make Ajax into a real force this season. Whether or not it's enough to challenge Feyenoord, mm. though, remains to be seen, Christoph. It certainly does. And with PSV stuttering, it may, as you say, be between them early doors as the pace setters in the air division. What do you think, guys? Let us know in the comments below, just for a change. Our final losers are Sevilla, who slumped mm. to a 3-1 loss to Athletic Bilbao. Georges Champaoli, not a happy bunny, and for one reason only. Wait for this one. It's a mind-blowing statistic. It's 500 days since Sevilla last won an away league game. 500 days of summer might be a fantastic film, but 500 days of away losses is not good for Georges Champaoli's boys, is it, Christophe? No, mate. That is like Celtic in Europe. Ooh. Now, we love George Champaoli here on the Euro Football Daily. We love his brand of football. We like the way his teams press, get up the pitch. We like what he did with Chile. But he was booed off the pitch, Joseph. I mean, Sevilla were unbeaten before this. But now, as you say, a long time for those away fans to sample victory on the road. They, had, they didn't win in 19 games under Unai Emery last season. As we did get his first goal, which is one of the big pluses of this game. But Sirigu... Deary God. Deary me, what was he thinking? He lost his head. Yes, a bit of that. He was throwing a bit of elbows. Right in the back of uh, one of uh, Athletic's centre forwards. And we think Enzonzi was left to face the subsequent penalty. <laughs> Absolute scenes on the road for San Paoli's men. Yeah, horrible, horrible days. I feel sorry for you Sevilla fans travelling up and down Spain to watch that brand of garbage on the road. But what do they need to do to turn it round? And can they expect Champions League football this year? Let us know what you think in the comments. So that was this week's Euro Roundup. Thank you for joining me, Ginge. 
It's been a pleasure. Guys, did we miss any big results? You know what to do. Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, why don't you check out the top 10 breakout stars of 2016-17 playing on screen right now. Could there be a player mm. of Hakim Zayek standard coming this season? Ooh, who knows? It's a belter. <laughs> Click on screen right now. It is an absolute corker, I can confirm. And as always, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Drop mic. <laughs>